This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we'll show you how to pipe a buttercream lysianthus flower, from making your colors to piping your blossoms. This video will be broken into segments, so you can skip ahead or rewatch as desired. We're going to show you how to make the colors we use, talk about the bags and tips, We'll also go over the practical techniques and practice those on paper. Then we'll talk about how you're gonna use them to build your blossoms. We'll practice on a nail and finally finish it up by placing some of your lovely blossoms on a cupcake. If you enjoyed this video, we hope you check out more in our flower series or just some of our other videos about cake decorating. We're gonna make two colors for our lysianthus. The first one is pink. And we're going to use several colors to make these. We're going to use our neon bright pink, red red, and then for the yellow we're going to make, we're going to use lemon yellow and just a touch of our buckeye brown. So to start with, I've got a couple of ounces of white American or simple style buttercream in my bowl, and I'm just going to start with two nice drops of that pink if it'll cooperate, there we go. And one of my red. And I'm just looking to make a nice medium tone. Oh, that ended up being too red. With just a little bit of a different feel than if I just use that pink. So I'm just adding a little red just to kind of change the color a little bit. And I think that's actually gonna be perfect. They come in a wide variety of shades from white to kind of pale greens to light pinks to really vibrant ones. And they also come in a great range of purples as well. So they're a fun flower to make and you can make them in a wide variety of colors. And I really like that. It's a really nice medium tone pink. It's got a little bit of coolness to it because of the red red we put in it. And I think that's gonna look wonderful. So we're gonna set this aside now and make our yellow. So for our yellow, I'm just gonna start with two drops of that yellow and a couple of specks of this Buckeye Brown. I just have a little bit squeezed out on this lid container, container lid, sorry, and I'm gonna just take a few little tiny specks with my toothpick and I'm looking to give it a nice kind of mustardy golden feel. It's how their centers, they kind of have a nice little mustard golden vibe to them. And usually it's kind of like brown with yellow stamens, but we're trying to make an in-between color so that we don't have to do as much work. And I think this is going to be perfect. Just needs a little more brown and it's going to have that nice golden mustard tone to it. It's going to be perfect. So that's really going to give us just a nice little bit of contrast there in the centers with that nice kind of golden mustard color that's really intense. So I like the way our colors are going. We're going to load up our bags and show you what tips we're using. So let's talk about the bags and tips that we're gonna use. I've got three bags. They're all 12 inch disposable bags. I've got some extra buttercream. In this case, mine is white, but it could be any color with a number 12 tip. And we're gonna use that to make the bases that our flowers are built on. I have a small star tip, in this case, a number 13. So really tiny opening. If you don't have a 13, a 14 would work as well. Or you could use one of your plain round tips. They just won't have that fun little detail from the star effect. And then, for petal tips, I'm using a 124K. Now, if you don't have one of those, you could always substitute in, say, like a 105 or 104, something that's just a regular um, petal tip, and those standard sizes would work as well. It'll give you fatter petals that won't be as delicate, but the plus side of that would be that the flowers would be a little more stable. These are gonna give us nice, thin, kind of really super delicate petals and give us that look of those great little lysianthus petals that kind of curl over and do lots of wonderful, roughly things. So those are the three tips that I'm gonna use and a substitute you can use for that 124K if you don't have it. All right, let's talk about the individual techniques and strokes we're gonna to use to create our lysianthus flowers. With the number 12 tip, we're gonna make essentially an elongated dot. Now, when you make your dots, typically you wanna hold up off the surface, squeeze, let it balloon, and then stop and pull away. But in this case, we're just gonna slide up ever so slightly before we finish that off. And our goal is to make it about three quarters of an inch to an inch high. So just a little bit taller than our normal dot. That's gonna help support our petals. 
for our number 13 tip, we're gonna do those little stamens in the middle. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I would create a star. And then to pull a spike, I'm just gonna keep pulling up. And when I reach the height I want, pull away. And that's gonna give us those nice little spikes of stars that'll give us that little bit of texture that's gonna make wonderful little stamens for us. And finally, with our 124K, when we set up our bag, we're essentially just going to pull straight little petals. So we're going to start from the back of our flower, pull towards ourselves, same kind of angle I would use for a lot of flowers where the bag itself is going to be at 45 degrees, and the back of the bag is going to be towards my shoulder. And I'm just going to use a slight little arc motion to it. So it's going to be very subtle on these. You don't really need to do anything too big or too dramatic. And we're just going to be pulling towards ourselves the entire time. So these are the three little techniques that we're going to use and I'll show them to you up close. So very easy. We're just going to make a nice elongated dot for our center. We're going to put some stamens on top of it and then pull some petals around it. And we'll talk about the exact construction in our next segment. All right, let's talk about building our blossoms. So we're gonna combine those three techniques that we talked about. We're gonna use our number 12 tip to make that nice elongated dot. We're going to take our yellow in our bag with our number 13 tip, and we're gonna pull some spikes on the top. We're gonna to do one in the middle, and it usually takes me around four or five to go around the outside. That's gonna build up a nice stable center so that when we pipe those thin petals, they really have something to rest on and support them. And when we pipe those petals, we're gonna start right, holding the bag so that the skinny end of that tip is straight up, the fatter end is straight down, and that fatter end is gonna nest right next to the base of those little stamens, and the skinny end is gonna be up by the top. And when we pull towards ourselves, we're gonna move down the cone towards the base, right? And that'll be what we do for our first row of petals. And when we apply them, we're gonna do it in kind of a spiraling out motion. So we'll put on one petal, We'll kind of turn our nail back and we'll go behind it and pull the next one so that they're kind of overlapping each other in a spiraling pattern. It gives them the look that they're kind of opening out, unfurling out in this wonderful spiraling pattern. When we go to do our second row, the idea here is more so to cover up the rest of the base. So I'm going to pull that tip further down, angle the top out a little bit and put more petals on just to cover up any remaining white. And in this case, for this video, I've actually used the white so that it's easy for you all to see where it's uncovered. It'll be a little easier for you in person if you use, say, the same color as either your stamens or your petals. It'll be easy to cover up. If you have any gaps, people won't really notice them because the colors are the same, right? So if you use pink for the centers and pink for the petals at home, if you have a few gaps or spaces, no one will really notice it. On camera, I want to be able to notice it so you'll know if it's not covered and I'll know if it's not covered really easy as well. And you can kind of see what I'm doing a little better. But at home, it's a little more practical practical to actually use the same color if you have some extra on hand. So now that we've talked about how we're going to actually build those flowers using those techniques, we're going to pull over our flower nail and give it a practice. So we've got our nail out. I'm just going to give myself a tiny dab of buttercream to help my little paper stick and I'm going to get started. So we'll start with our bag of white and our number 12 tip. And we're just going to go up off the surface. You'll notice bag is straight up and down letter frosting, balloon out, and then just pull that nice slow little column up and finish it off. You can see we've got one that's about half an inch, sorry, three quarters of an inch to about an inch high. And then we're going to set up with our number 13 tip. So we've got our nice golden yellow in this. Again, bag straight up and down squeeze a star and pull up and you can see you get those nice little kind of almost like I don't know between a quarter and a half inch spikes and I'm just going to go all the way around and this is going to give us a nice stable center for those flowers so you can see we built it up in kind of almost a nice straight column there and I'm going to change over to my 124 and this is the one where it gets a little trickier, right? We're going to start the tip is around the back, right? And we're just going to curl around as we turn and connect it to the bottom. So you can see it kind of spirals 
down like that. For the next one, I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit so that the next petal starts behind that one and go down again. So you can see there's a little gap between them. They kind of open up and we're getting this nice spiraling effect there. So just keep going around, put on as many petals as you need to to get all the way back to the beginning. And sometimes it takes me a few more, sometimes it takes me a few less. It depends on how far out you kind of space them, right? So you can see I've enclosed the entire thing. I've got some fun little kind of wrinkles and wiggles there. It's giving me a lovely little look. It's one of the reasons I like using the Korean tips with this kind of buttercream because it gives us a nice fun look. Um, it gives us those kind of little natural little wiggles and swirls. So for this one, instead of holding that tip straight up and down, I'm gonna just angle it out a tiny bit in my hand. I'm gonna go right in between some of those petals. I'm about halfway down, right? And you can see it works to cover up the base. And I'm just gonna keep going until I end up covering up all that white. Sometimes it takes me a few more strokes, sometimes a few less. And I find the more you practice these, the easier they're gonna get, the easier it is to get a feel of how you're nesting that in there and how that buttercream behaves. But you can see it gives us this look of this beautiful, delicate flower that's kind of unfolding in a nice little spiral fashion. And it gives us that nice kind of tall look to those lysianthus. And you can see I've covered up pretty much all of that white. So when we put it on a cake, you're not gonna see any of that center. So we get a nice, beautiful flower. If you feel like it's unbalanced, I kind of like mine like that. Like it has a little more opening on one side, a little closed on the other. And I think that looks beautiful. You can always add a few more petals here and there to kind of finish up the look and even it up if you want. But I kind of like them when they're like this, where they're a little uneven, a little more natural. Typically I pop these on a tray, get them nice and hard, especially because we've got these thin, delicate petals before I put them on anything. All right, so this would normally be the part where we pipe on an actual cupcake, but since this flower is so tiny, you're gonna knock into your cupcake. So it's actually best to do these on a flower nail and transfer them over, but it gives us a good opportunity to talk about transferring things over. So we have a little cupcake, it's iced with some white buttercream, and we have a couple of little flowers that we did ahead of time that are now nice and firm. So I'm just gonna take a little extra green that I had on hand with a leaf tip, and you can give yourself some cute little leaves just for a nice little pop of green. If you need to, a little extra buttercream. And then if you don't have flower lifters, you can always use something else. So say a nice little offset spatula, especially a tapered one. They're gonna be great to position and reposition things on your cupcakes. You see, you can see that gives us a nice, beautiful, delicate little flower there on our cupcake and it's easy enough to finish them off with your leaf tip. It's a great way to secure them and also to cover up any little spots at the base that maybe you don't like or any petals. So you can see we have a sweet, pretty little flower on our cupcake. It's got that wonderful feeling of spiraling open and it's really easy to affix them quickly with just a few little green leaves. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.